The Lord be with you. It's great to have you here again on this beautiful day God has given to us. Today we are blessed with Reverend Tim Heineke, our beloved pastor to the north at uh, New Life in Hugo. So we're glad that he's here and he's going to share with us about fragrant oil. So hopefully this will be a true blessing as we learn about another promised treasure that God has given to us. So let's stand and, and uh, continue with our matins as we begin with matins. Oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Glory be to the Father and to Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come, let us worship Him. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come, let us worship Him. Please be seated as we sing our hymn.
Our Old Testament reading is taken from Genesis 8, beginning with the 15th verse. Then God said to Noah, go out from the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, that they may swarm on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every bird, everything that moves on the earth, went out by families from the ark. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever again strike down every living creature as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, Summer and winter, day and night, shall not cease. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is taken from Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth in the second chapter. When I came to Troas to preach the gospel of Christ, even though a door was opened for me in the Lord, my spirit was not at rest because I did not find my brother Titus there, So I took leave of them and went on to Macedonia. But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one, a fragrance from death to death. To the other, a fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not, like so many, peddlers of God's word, but as men of sincerity, as commissioned by God, in the sight of God, we speak in Christ. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. And he said to them, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you, and they will not listen to you, when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. O Lord, have mercy on our... This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Over the course of our Wednesdays together, as we're focusing on God's promised treasures, we get to see all these different visual aids, now these different visual reminders of God's promises to us. And some of these are rather familiar. Ashes, bread, water, light, salt, But today, we have oil. Now, when we hear about oil, there may be a few different things that maybe come to our minds. Uh, Maybe we think of, like, cooking oil or, like, olive oil. For myself, what first comes to my mind is motor oil. Now, when we talk about different kinds of oil, oil may not be what something that we would really connect with fragrant oil, or the idea of joy and gladness. 
But back in biblical times, oil was used for lots of different things, and especially for special occasions. It was used to anoint kings and priests. It was something special to put on them to show how their job was important, and it was a part of God's plan for his people. They also put it on dead bodies as a part of their burial practice. And sometimes, when people prayed about something, they would use oil as that visual reminder of God's promises, like in our gospel reading for this morning. Now, the oil they used was not like motor oil. Uh, Their oil was more of kind of like what we would call perfume or essential oils. They would oftentimes have a, a strong and beautiful smell to it. And so sometimes when people would read from God's word, they would open up some of that oil and kind of connect that smell with that scripture reading. So then later on, when they would smell that scent again, they would then be able to connect it to that scripture reading that they had earlier read. But even after the New Testament was written, oil has still been used by God's people over the course of the last 2,000 years. Even before 1,000 A.D., Christians would talk about putting oil on themselves right after their baptism. Even Martin Luther talks about this in the 1500s A.D. He would talk about putting oil on someone right before their baptism as a visual reminder of God's promises to them. And even some Christians today, when they're really praying about something, they may use oil as that visual reminder of God's promises in his word. So let's go back to our reading from 2 Corinthians. And so I invite you to be able to either open up the the Pew Bibles, or if you've got your own Bible, um, or if you've got a a Bible app on your phone. But let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. This is our epistle reading for today. As Paul's writing to these Christians in Corinth, He's writing to them, and he's talking about this oil language that he's picking up on. So we'll go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, and we're especially jumping down to verses 14 through 17, where Paul writes, But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession, and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one, a fragrance from death to death. Uh, To the other, fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not, like so many, peddlers of God's word, but as men of sincerity, as commissioned by God. In the sight of God, we speak in Christ. Now, there's a lot going on in these few short verses. And Paul's especially picking up on this this fragrant or this good-smelling oil language. Some people had worked their way into the Corinthian church. And they're going around telling people that Paul was not actually an apostle. In fact, instead, he was just a fake apostle and he was just making some of this stuff up. So as Paul and others shared this gospel, some of the people did not like the sound of it. Uh, When some people heard about Jesus, uh, when they heard about how he was the only way to be saved, how they were sinners who need to repent and need to receive his life-saving forgiveness, when they heard all this Jesus talk, they did not like it. It smelled funny to them. It just did not seem right to these people. For them, it was the fragrance of death. And yet this gospel, this Jesus talk, was exactly what they needed to hear. And whether or not they wanted to hear it, this was the life-saving good news they needed. Jesus really did love them. He really did go to the cross to save them, to win forgiveness and life for them, forgiveness for their sins. Jesus wanted to forgive and to save them. He wants to be their Savior. This gospel is actually the 
fragrance of life. It's actually a good thing. It's a beautiful thing which saves their lives. So what about us today? We're obviously in a different church and cultural context than these Christians in the Mediterranean 2,000 years ago. And yet, we can relate to these words, especially for two reasons. First of all, for ourselves, even as Christians, it is not always comfortable coming face to face with our reality for a savior. This is what this Lent season really is all about, about taking the time to pause and be honest about our need for Jesus, how we are sinners, how we fall short, how we do not deserve to have a Savior who loves us, and how our sins deserve punishment. We do not deserve to be in heaven forever. It's hard to be this honest about our desperate need for a Savior. For us, this can sometimes be this fragrance of death. Second of all, sometimes other people do not want to hear the gospel. Sometimes people do not like it when we take a stand for Jesus and when we take a stand on the truth of his word. When we take this stand on God's truth for our lives, Sometimes it, it smells funny to them. You know, they don't like all this, this Jesus talk. And they may even get mad at us. They may even call us names. For them, the gospel is this fragrance of death. Now, thankfully, the gospel is a good thing. This gospel, this Jesus talk is exactly what we need even though it may be uncomfortable to come face to face with our reality for a Savior, this is exactly the truth. We have a Savior who is right here for us. We have a Savior who loves each and every single one of us so much that he went to the cross for us to win forgiveness for our sins, to take the punishment for our mistakes, and to win forgiveness and life for us. We have a Savior who is right there for us, waiting with open arms, wanting to forgive our sins and save our lives. And not just us, but he wants to forgive and save everyone. He wants everyone to have this relationship with him and to know the truth and the joy of what it means to be a Christian, of what it means to have Jesus in our lives. This gospel is actually a, a fragrance for life. It's actually a good thing. It's a beautiful thing, which has the power to save our lives. So as the Bible talks about fragrant or good-smelling oil, we may have lots of images which come to our minds when, when we first think about oil. Again, for myself, it's motor oil. Now, growing up with a mechanic for a dad, the smell of motor oil was something we were relatively familiar with. Everything kind of smelled like motor oil. It was a part of our lives. Now, I'm guessing for most people, the smell of motor oil is probably not a good thing. For most people, it's probably a, a dirty smell, uh, something that needs to get kind of washed off or cleaned up. But for myself, I actually kind of like the smell of it. For me, it brings back so many memories of being out in the garage or in the shed with my dad. I actually don't mind the smell of motor oil. The motor oil is something necessary in our lives to keep things moving, all the way from cars to heavy equipment to power stations, supplying the electricity that we use. And even though we may need motor oil, some people may like the smell of it, and some people may not. And thankfully, we also have the gospel. And we need the gospel way more than we need motor oil. And some people may like the smell of it, and some people may not. For us, 
the smell of the gospel, the smell of this fragrant oil of God's promises and his word is a good thing. It's a fragrant and good-smelling promise that he gives to us in our lives. And because God promises to forgive us, God promises to be right there with us throughout our lives. And God also promises to not only forgive us, but to forgive anyone who trusts in him. God promises to be right by our side as we go out and as we share his good-smelling promises with others. And whether or not others want to hear this truth, God is there for us, and he is faithful. And to all who have Jesus in their lives, God's promises really are the fragrance of life. Amen. And may the peace of God, a peace which goes well beyond all of our understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, our faithful and good-smelling Savior. Amen. We continue our time together as we join in singing the Te Deum. Uh, we can especially find that on page 223. Please stand.
Please be seated. At this time, we'll gather our offerings. We also ask that you send registration cards. If you're a guest, we've got blue cards. Love to have you fill out one and place that into the offering plate, along with all the disciples of Jesus here, completing an ivory card. We now give from what God has given to us. In our prayers this morning, we will include a prayer for Sharon Calhoun, who will be having hip replacement surgery next Wednesday, as well as her brother Bob, who is having bypass surgery uh, today. Let us stand. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. O Lord our God, blessed are you, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. United with our Savior by our baptism into his death and resurrection, you now cover us in the fragrance of your gospel, pouring out upon us the oil of joy and gladness. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, God of mercy and grace, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God 
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We invite you to join us for a meal on our lower level that is served by our Trinity Guild, and we now say a prayer first. Good and gracious God, it is good to be here to once again praise your name, to be reminded of the fragrant oil that you have blessed us with, not only the physical oil, but the precious good news of Jesus Christ. So we pray, bless us as we seek to be those wonderful messengers so that people who are yet to hear and believe will do so. So we pray, Lord, bless us with this food that has been prepared for our bodies to nourish and to strengthen them as we seek to be your servants, sharing and caring and growing in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We sing our sending hymn. 